Hi! In this video we will finally discuss Dragon Rot, the last thing that pertains to Dragon Heirs and their heritage. We will also explore Rot Essences and the Memorial Mob. However, before all that, let's go back for a minute and discuss the crazy rice lady again. In my previous video I told you that her real name is Lady's Old Maid and that's what I believed. While doing research for this video I stumbled upon her picture in the art book where she's named exactly like her Rot Essence, a person of deep faith. So, I thought I made a mistake and Lady's Old Maid and Crazy Rice Lady are not the same, otherwise why would she have two different pictures in the art book? I was really upset about it and pinned a comment under my Dragonairs 3 video to try and clarify this misunderstanding, but it's been bugging me for days now. Who is the Lady's Old Maid then? Some Japanese sources suggest that Lady's Old Maids are the grandmas in the Ashina castle that alert samurai to your presence. However, I don't think that's the case. They look very different from the picture and their name is kind of weird in this context. There are no ladies in the Ashina castle. Moreover, this lady has something to do with the Sempo temple, or some sort of temple, because of her very special scepter thing that has a finial of a Shakujo staff. Who is she? Where can you find her? I have no idea. This isn't an early concept art or cut content because it would have been indicated as such. The more I looked at both ladies, the more I saw how similar they were. The rice lady is just a disheveled, long-haired version of Lady's Old Maid. They are dressed in identical clothes. It's kinda hard to see, but they are. She doesn't have the Shakuja finial anymore, sure, but that's because she is no longer a part of the Senpo Temple. It's not that we don't meet Lady's Old Maid in the game, we just never meet her at this point in time. Bottom line. If you know where in the game this particular lady, dressed in exactly these clothes and with a small Shakuja staff, can be found, please leave me a comment below. Until then, I still think that the crazy rice lady is Lady's old maid gone mad, and my theory about her taking care of the child of rejuvenation at some point still holds. I'll go remove my comment under my previous video because it now seems to create more misunderstanding. Moving on to Dragon Rod and the Memorial Mob. As usual, we'll quickly go over the disclaimers, legend, and sources. If it's not your first time around, feel free to skip ahead. Number one, use common sense. Please do not assume that I have access to some secret true knowledge. I'm just entertained by reading Sekiro in Japanese. My low theories are just theories, so treat them accordingly. Number two, I am not a professional translator, I have never worked in localization. Yes, I will say that something is translated poorly and something is not, and it will be my personal point of view. Ultimately, my goal is to give you the information so you can see if the localization was good or not, whether something important was lost or not. My opinion is just that, and I choose to share it. Number three, I am not an expert on Buddhism. I will leave links to the Buddhist terms that we will encounter so you can read more on your own if you're interested. As usual, the transcriptions I give do not follow all academic rules and I don't think it's necessary. They are just here to represent the pronunciation in case you're curious. All sources I used for this research will be listed in the description box below along with all the additional information that I referenced throughout the video so you can read more if you're interested. There you will also find a link to my original blog post if you want to read it through. Dragon Rod is Ryugai, literally Dragon Cuff. As you probably noticed, the main symptom of those infected with this disease is Cuff. Dragon Rod spreads when wolf dies a certain number of times. Resurrection doesn't trigger it, only true death. The wiki says that Dragon Rod triggers every 10 deaths or so, but I personally didn't find it to be the case during my first playthrough. I think I had the sculptor infected at the beginning, and apart from him, maybe one more NPC, even though I died a lot. I wonder if there are any hidden conditions that possibly reset the death counter for Dragon Rod as you progress the game. Dragon Rod lowers your chances of receiving Unseen Aid, its original name is Myojo. Myojo is defined as the divine protection or help of Shinto gods and Buddha that cannot be seen. I say that Unseen Aid is a great name for it. By default, your Unseen Aid chance is 30%, it halves with the first rod essence you receive and then lowers little by little with every subsequent rod essence. When you trigger Dragon Rod for the first time, there is a little pop-up that explains to you what it is and how it spreads. If the one who possesses the power of the dragon's heritage accumulates death, the disease called Dragon Cuff will be spread upon the world. When the sculptor gets infected with Dragon Rod, Emma takes care of him and collects his blood sample. 
However, one sample is not enough to help her on her quest of creating a cure, so she asks you to get another sample from someone else who caught Dragonrod. The original name of this item is Ryugai no Kekai, Dragon Cuff Blood Clot. The English description is a little lacking compared to the original one. This is something those infected with Dragon Cuff throw up or spit out with their cuff. It's mixed with stagnated blood. As for the stagnated blood that Emma keeps mentioning, it's a quality pertaining more to the color of blood. That's what Emma says in her dialogue. The color of blood appears slightly stagnant, and that's what the description of the blood sample says. For stagnant, the original uses the verb yodomu, to stagnate, to become sluggish or stale. I think when attributed to blood and its color, it implies that due to the spread of dragon rot, human blood becomes kind of dark and dead. It's stale, sluggish, and prone to forming clots that those sick with the disease throw up when they cough. After you collect another sample, Emma gives you a recovery charm. Its original name is Kaifuku no Mamori, Recovery o Mamori or a recovery charm. We already discussed what a no Mamori is, feel free to refresh your memory. The original description has a bit more detail when talking about the dragon rot recovery process. The power of life will be returned to those robbed of it, and then those afflicted with dragon cuff will recover. When I read solidifying to a bloodstone and the corresponding Japanese part, I couldn't help but wonder. Sure, keseki is a simple word made of simple kanji blood and stone, but I checked the dictionary nonetheless and it casually informed me that keseki means bloodstone. How the heck do you have an existing word in your language that just means bloodstone? English, I'm looking at you too. What's bloodstone? In the context of Sekiro, it's literal, sure, Emma took a blood sample, did something to it, and it solidified, and she calls it a bloodstone. How come this word already exists? Turns out I'm not educated enough in minerals. A Japanese Japanese dictionary explained to me that keseki is one of the names for heliotrope, a crypto-crystalline mixture of quartz that occurs either as opaque jasper or as translucent chalcedony. The mineral might include red spots of iron oxide, and since they resemble spots of blood, the mineral is called keseki, or in English, bloodstone. Japanese has several names for heliotrope, including blood meteorite, blood pebble, and such. In Russian it might be called blood jasper, but we mostly reserve the blood metaphor for hematite. Its name is literally derived from the Greek word meaning blood. The last line of the original description was not localized into English. Again, I'm almost certain that this happened solely because there wasn't much space on the card. This bloodstone is a guidepost to bring peace to those who need to be cured. I think what this line tries to convey is that, with this single bloodstone that Emma managed to create from two dragon rot victims, you can cure any other subsequent victim, because this bloodstone will sort of lead the way. Yay for the sculptor, saving people with the blood in his cuff. We already covered Dragon's Blood Droplet in one of the previous videos. When you use it, the words you see on the screen are Ryugai Kaifuku, Dragon Cuff Recovery. As we previously discussed, Emma tells Wolf that this dragon rot epidemic is not the first one, there was one before, and since the cure was never found, everyone who caught it died. I have a theory that the list of victims includes Lord Takeru and that apparently even dragonairs can catch dragon rot. If you missed it, I'll leave a link to my Tomoe and Takeru video in the description box below. Funny, but rot essence in Japanese is called sekinoto, literally a sound of coughing. Since the localization chose to translate Ryugai as dragon rot, they couldn't really use cough in the name of this item, so they settled for rot essence, which I think is a great way to stick to your localization decisions. On one hand, rot essence, or sound of coughing, is an item, and on the other hand, it's not really a material thing that you can hold in your hand, and I think Rot Essence captures these details as well. Each Rot Essence refers to an afflicted NPC slightly differently to what their name might be in the game, and this is also a way to tell us more about them. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get all Rot Essence pictures in decent quality, so we'll dissect one example, and then you'll have to trust me on what the Japanese original says. Don't worry, I'll provide quotes. Every single sound of coughing is titled in a similar fashion, sound of coughing plus NPC name. All of them start identically with the sentence, from somewhere you can hear excruciating coughing, or as the English localization translated it, somewhere a pained cough rings out continuously. All rot essence descriptions also end in the same way, 
owning this item reduces one's chances of receiving unseen aid. The structure of the description itself is also quite consistent across almost all rot essences. It starts with the cuff is coming from, then the description of the person, and then just a man or an old woman. Some rot essences, however, do not follow this structure, and I'll say which ones when we get there. The original calls him the one who carves Buddhas. He's carving Buddhas not to be burned by the building flame. Its motto means to pile up and is often used to talk about snow. Interestingly enough, to describe his zeal, the original uses the word isinferan, wholeheartedly, with undivided concentration and attention. You might remember how we talked about Ishin and the fact that he's likely named this way because of his dedication to his swordsmanship. To describe sculptor and his process of carving Buddhas, the original uses an even stronger word. This rot essence tells us about Anayama the peddler. The original calls him the one expanding his trade or business. Obviously, this name is way too long to fit into the title of the rot essence card, so the English localization called him newcomer. The description just repeats the same idea about the man wanting to expand his business, so you get the information nonetheless. The original description doesn't mention anything about him traveling frequently, but I suppose it was edited in so newcomer would make more sense. This one belongs to Black Hat Badger, and it refers to him as the one who wears a black straw hat. The abandoned place he wants to return to, I think, is the cave where his child is buried. This one tells us about Kotaro. Its original name says Okinamayuiko, not just lost child, but big lost child. Again, I think this name just wouldn't fit the line. Even though his body is large, he's like a lost child. I keep thinking about Kotaro and the way he talks about the dead children of the Senpo temple. Do you think he was friends with them? Oh, this is Jin Zaimon, and I hope as intensely as I can that when I get to his questline I will be able to understand what it was about and what his connection to Odin and Lord Sakuza is, whoever that guy might be. So the essence calls him the charmed one or the mesmerized one. The original description doesn't shy away from using the exact same verb to describe him charmed by beautiful melody. It's called those who conduct research or study. This description is slightly different in terms of structure. Even though their minds are troubled or occupied, they are tirelessly conducting their research over and over again. This is where the usual description would end, however this one has one more sentence. You can hear the cough piling up. At first I thought this line referred to the test subjects, like there is a dragon rod cuff from the surgeons plus the unrelated cuff from their test subjects. But I'm not sure test subjects cuff. I actually think they don't, and this line is here to tell us that even though the surgeons are afflicted with dragon rod, they're unstoppable in their research and their cuffs pile up on one another as they continue working. This is Inosuke Nogami, and the original refers to him as Koko Musuko, where koko denotes filial piety and musko means son. Fine son is quite accurate. His mother is not sick though, she's just toshioiru, old. The coughing is coming from a man thinking of his old mother. Funny, but the Nosuke's rot essence and Shosuke's rot essence share the exact same picture. Shosuke is called a scared and thirsty person. The description just reiterates the same information. This one belongs to Inosuke Nogami's mother, the original calls her a concerned or anxious old woman. She's deeply worried for her master Kuro. To describe her feelings for him, the original uses the word itsukushimu, to love someone weaker than oneself, or to love tenderly. So sweet. This rot essence tells us more about old hag, whom we just discussed in the previous video. She was the one asking for rice and telling you all about the child of rejuvenation. Her name is a deeply religious person. I think she was a part of the Senpo temple before they started kidnapping children and strayed away from the ways of Buddha. Now she also holds deep religious faith, and I think it is her faith in the child of rejuvenation. This description is also different in structure. The first and the last parts that usually encircle the description are combined into one sentence right away, and it seems the description would end there, but no, it has another paragraph. Keeping one's faith, even when driven mad, allows one to see certain things. Thank heavens. The English localization does a really good job translating this paragraph, it's very accurate. 
I wonder what it was that this woman saw in her madness. Was it the way to help the child of rejuvenation lead the dragon away from this land, ending the search for immortality and in some way atoning for the sins that were committed in this blasphemous pursuit? Since the memorial mob can catch Dragonrod 2, I thought it would be fitting to talk about these guys in this video. There is actually a lot that we can learn about them by simply observing and listening. These merchants are called Kuyosu, where Kuyo means holding a service and Su denotes a group of people. I think Memorial Mob is a great localization, it sounds good, it's elegant, and it's fairly accurate. So all these merchants belong to the same group of people who perform Shisha no Kuyo, Memorial Service for the Dead. I'm no expert in Buddhist services, but I think what they're performing might be a memorial service for the dead performed in perpetuity by a Buddhist temple. This is done when the departed does not have a successor, a child or a grandchild, or any blood relative for that matter, who could be taking care of the ceremony. This type of memorial service is also held when the departed were the victims of natural disasters or died in war. If you look closely, you will notice that all merchants have the same set of items. They all burn incense. Incense appeared in Japan in the 6th century with the introduction of Buddhism, where it is used in rituals and ceremonies. The pole they used to set up their tents is actually a shakujo staff. Shakujo is a ringed Buddhist staff that was carried by traveling monks. Originally, it was used as a noisemaker to announce a monk's presence so people would know and would come to give alms. It was also used to scare away animals, including tigers, and ward smaller animals like snakes and insects off the monk's path so they wouldn't be accidentally stepped on. In Japan, the shakujo was used as a weapon, and the formidable one indeed, in the hands of a seasoned Buddhist monk. Its metal tip is very sharp, and the bottom end also has a metal part that can inflict considerable damage, but I'm sure you know how it feels, because some senpo monks use the exact same shakujo staffs to beat the crap out of wolf. The number of metal loops on top of the shakujo staff can vary, but all combinations carry symbolic significance based on Buddhist numerical formulas. In the game, both the staffs of Memorial Mob and the staffs used by the Senpo monks are identical and are topped with six metal loops, three on either side of the pole. As far as I can say, this is sort of a standard appearance of the Shakujo staff. They all have a Saisen Bako. If you've ever been to a Buddhist temple or a Shinto shrine, you might have noticed a wooden coin box with a grate for the top part that is used to collect offerings. The money offered to gods and bodhisattvas are called Saisen, and the box is called Saisen Bako, a box for Saisen. All memorial mob have these boxes inside their tents, and all these boxes bear a small sigil of the Senpo temple that depicts a gokurei, five-pronged bell that is also the elusive whole bell, and two ginkgo leaves. All memorial mob tents have a lit metal lantern. Traditional Japanese lanterns made of metal, stone, or wood are a whole other topic to discuss, there are so many types of them and so many nuances in their use and significance, However, I think that the ones the memorial mob have hanging off the shakuja staffs are actually metal tsuridoro, hanging lanterns that were originally used in Buddhist temples to illuminate paths and were also considered an offering to Buddha when lit. These are the things they all have in common. Each specific member of the memorial mob has his own little things in or around the tent, like the one near the Ashina castle gate has parts of armor and a bunch of spears and katana swords lying around because he's basically sitting on a battlefield, I think we can conclude that the memorial mob are acting on behalf of the Senpo temple, as evidenced by the emblem on their Saisen box and the related items, conducting a memorial service for the dead who have nobody to take care of them. That's why they are located in such specific places, on the battlefield, on the cliffside where dozens of children are buried, near a prison, in the poisonous pool, basically where people still live and die but there is nobody to take care of them afterwards. When you talk to any memorial mob, they all greet you with the same line, how about an offering for the dead? And when you're done with them, they bid you farewell with May the dead have happiness in the next world, or May the dead rest in peace. Their rot essences call them Kuyosha, a person who performs a memorial service to reflect the fact that an individual merchant got afflicted with dragon rot. I found it very curious that the original description never explicitly gives the location of the merchant. You kind of have to solve it like a puzzle based on the name and the facts mentioned in the text. Their in-game names usually refer to the place they're at, and their rot essence names tell us more about who they are and for whom they perform their services. We'll look at both names. I tried to structure this part as nicely as I could so nobody, including me, would get confused, 
and I hope I achieved at least some semblance of clarity. Keep in mind that the original names might be quite long when accurately translated, and the English localization had only a handful of symbols at their disposal to fit the name, and Rot Essence and Memorial Mob were already taking up a chunk of the line. His Rot Essence name is kinda cute. Karasana Tomotaro can be translated as Friend of Crows or Crows Companion. His in-game name points at the location he's at. Karasano Nedoko literally translates to Crow's Bed. His localization is on point. The localized version says that he takes pride in memorializing the dead, and I think it might correspond to this part. He continues to memorialize the dead while looking from above or looking down. Here, it most certainly literal. He's not looking down on the dead or being prideful at all. He's just perched all the way up on the cliffside, so he kind of inevitably looks down on everyone in the literal sense. But I think the localization most likely only had text and no images or any knowledge on where this character is located, so they did their best with what they had. The localization also missed the line, he is doing the service with the birds that flock to death. These details are supposed to give you clues on which merchant it is, even if you don't remember his name, the one that sits high up with the birds overlooking the area. Instead, the English localization chose to tell the players directly that he is somewhere in Ashen Outskirts. I'm not sure where who is near death comes from. The first line about coughing is identical across all rot essences and just translates to the one who is coughing, yet this mob for some reason is quite dramatic. Senjo means battlefield, so he's battlefield mob. His in-game name again points to the location he's at, Senjo Soba, near a battlefield. The original description is much simpler than the localized version. He continues memorializing those who perished in battle. His rot essence name can be translated as Memorial Mob of the Abandoned. His in-game name points to his location, the Abandoned Jail. The description itself is pretty accurate, he both continues to see those gruesomely abandoned and continues memorializing the dead. This mob's names are identical, minus the last kanji that points at him as an individual in his rot essence. Dokudamari is literally a pool of poison, and the original description says that this Memorial Mob drifted here. I feel like this verb lacks intention, much like in the case of Sakura Dragon, who also drifted to Ashina and then took root. Maybe this memorial mob didn't necessarily want to end up in this place. He's obviously suffering in this poison pool and is most likely gravely ill, but when he ended up in this place for whatever reasons, he probably saw that there are also people who need his services and that's why he stayed. He works to make offerings to those Buddha cannot save. Muen can be translated as unable to be saved by Buddha, but it can also mean without relations, having no surviving relatives. When talking about people of the Sunken Valley, I think these meanings might be more relevant than the religious one. These guys are isolated, changed by the poisonous swamp they live in, so there is not a lot of things or people that connect them to the world above. Hotoki Kawari literally translates to instead of Buddha. This mob is located on Mount Kongo near Senpo Temple that's strayed from the ways of Buddha. He continues performing the bare minimum of memorial services instead of the forgotten Buddha. I think the original description tries to convey the idea that, since the Senpo Temple strayed so far away from the ways of Buddha in its blasphemous pursuits, its residents can no longer be subjects of the memorial services. However, this mob chooses to perform the bare minimum at least some memorial services for them anyway. His in-game name is Sugendo Memorial Mob, and Sugendo is a syncretic Buddhic religion, a mystical spiritual tradition that originated in pre-feudal Japan. In this tradition, the awakening is reached through the understanding of the relationship between humanity and nature. Sugendo centers on ascetic, mountain-dwelling practice. It literally means the way to spiritual power through discipline. Sakibitari denotes continuous or daily drinking. Apparently, this member of the memorial mob partakes in the festivities of the Mibu village. Soaked in liquor, he has forgotten the sincerity of offerings. His in-game name points at his location. Murahazure means outskirts of a village or edge of town. You thought I forgot about him, didn't you? Well, I didn't. Fujioka, the info broker, is listed alongside the memorial mob in the artbook, not other NPCs, and they have identical icons. 
Memorial Mob and Fujioka are depicted side by side in the art book, so you can see that he's basically a younger, fresher version of a Memorial Mob member. They have identical hats. His rot essence name is Jijotsu, an informed source, a person who possesses information on a certain matter. I think I spot a little wordplay in this description. One situation or state of affairs can be widely solved, however, one's compassion cannot be discarded. Jijo denotes circumstances, situations, state of things, but when you leave only the second kanji, like it's done here, it's nasake, sympathy, mercy, compassion. I also think that the subjects in both parts of the sentence are different. Even though one's whereabouts or information can be widely sold, what Fujioka is doing, he can throw away his own sympathy and compassion. I think that Fujioka at some point might have been a part of the memorial mob, but left the group to start a more profitable business. However, he can't get rid of the compassion that likely led him to join the memorial mob in the first place. His in-game name is Jogoya no Fujioka, Fujioka the Informer. Who would have thought that Memorial Mob is such an interesting part of this world? It's incredible how such unwanted items like rot essences that you get because you die too often and bring a horrible epidemic upon those connected to you still serve to expand the lore and give us additional information on different characters that we cannot get otherwise. Sekiro is just an endless discovery. Whatever I look at, wherever I turn, I find more and more significant details that I either completely missed or just didn't know about their importance. The memorial mob could be anyone, nameless, loreless NPCs just selling you stuff. They don't have quests, they are not important for the story, only a few of them have dialogues. And yet there is so much we can learn about them just by paying a little bit more attention. I haven't decided yet what we'll do next, probably we'll start on prosthetic tools and upgrade materials, or look at different combat arts. There are still so many things for us to discuss. Don't forget to check the description for all the links and more reading. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.